America, we stand for freedom. Though freedom is never really free, we yearn and strive for government, protecting our liberty. Good evening and welcome to Your Right to Know by the Fitchburg Republican City Committee. My name is Mary Lotz and I will be your host for this evening's show. Tonight joining us for their second time on our show, Your Right to Know, is our two very highly respected and esteemed city councilors at large. To my uh, right, Councilor at Large Dean Tran and Father uh, Councilor at Large, Marcus Di Natale. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being with us. We consider you friends of the Fitchburg Republican City Committee, and we welcome you so much for being with us tonight. Um, we know you have so much, so many more pressing things to do with your lovely families and your homes and your business and your work on the City Council, but we certainly welcome you always to be with us. And I'd, as I open up tonight, I'd like to also let our audience know that the last time you were on, with us was uh, August, September of 2013. So I'm actually going to pivot off of some of the discussion we had at that time. So I would like to encourage anyone who's interested to go and check out On Demand at FATV or our YouTube channel and search for Fitchburg uh, FRCC and go back to those shows and set the stage for what we're going to talk about tonight. So we've got a big agenda. If it's okay with you guys, let's jump right into the discussion. Um, like I said, 2013 we talked. Sometimes people say, oh, nothing ever happens in government. 2013, we've got a good year and a half to talk about now in the rearview mirror so we can look at what's happened over the last 18 months. A uh, couple of things that were talked about at that time. Perception of Fitchburg. Both of you really felt, when we looked at what are some of the biggest problems in Fitchburg, you both cited, you felt that one of the biggest problems was perception. Um, where do you think we are today? Well, Mary, um, in, in the city of Fitchburg, the commercial and industrial um, tax revenue has gone down by 60% in the last seven to eight years. Um, crime rate has gone up. Mm -hmm. um, property taxes has gone up. And um, prop property values has gone down by 32%. So these are real problems, they're not perception. Okay. And um, I think we, we need to stop saying that we have a perception problem. A lot of people that I've, I've seen has said that we have a perception problem, so we need to go out there and say nice things about the city. Mm -hmm. Saying nice things about the city is not going to help the city. We have to recognize the problems, and we have to face the problems and try to solve them, and then everything else would fall into place. Is it fair? Marcus, do you feel the same way? I believe the ineffective and poor management at the mayoral level for the last 25 years has contributed heavily to the perception problem that we have. Some of the things the City Council has tried to do since the last year and a half has passed is we uh, compelled the existing mayor to fund three new additional police officers two of which are going to be focusing solely on patrols down in the downtown area. Uh, that it was after a heavy budget battle where the mayor was resisting hiring more officers and because of the city council's unified effort in reallocating funds, we were able to compel her to do that. So we've made some headway on the police ranks. Uh, in addition to that, we have once again voted to take our tax rate more towards a single tax rate away from the dual tax rate structure that we have, countering what uh, adding to what Councilor Tran was talking about, about our tax base, the end goal of that is to gradually increase our tax base on the commercial and industrial side, which is right now hanging around 20%, and with the long-term goal of lowering tax bills in the residents. So we have made some inroads on tax rates. We have made some inroads on public safety. Now, people have not seen, when I say inroads on tax rates, I don't mean people's taxes have gone down. What I mean is we are trying to entice more business development in the city through going towards a single rate. 
So we've made some inroads on public safety and, and, and tax rates, but there's a lot more that needs to be done. It's not a one-year deal. And I think it's important to note, as we did uh, 18 months ago, is that most cities do have a single tax rate, and Fitchburg is an outlier. Fitchburg is the only community in the central mass region that has a dual tax mm -hmm. rate still. And, and if we look at ourselves in comparison to our twin city, Lemonster, uh, they have a single rate, and their rate is about 40% less, less than ours. For both, isn't it? For both. For both. So, not only, not, only, not, only, not only are we getting cream with Unitel, not, not only are we here feeling the pinch with Unitel, but our tax rate also doesn't help either. Okay, let's go down a little bit now. The last time we met, we talked about the police chief search. At that time, it was shortly after Chief Robert DeMore put in his resignation. We were starting a search committee. You are hoping, although you wanted the best candidate, but you are actually hoping that we would get an internal candidate that would be interested and would identify the job. We now have Captain Ernest Martineau. Talk to me about that. What do you think about that? Well, happy? We had, I'm very happy. Um, we, we had two very qualified, great hometown men um, who were the candidates for the uh, police chief position? Either w either one of them would have uh, would make a great police mm -hmm. chief. And um, being a um, a longtime resident of Fitchburg and being a, a Fitchburg boy growing up in this city, I was uh, ec ecstatic that we had someone coming from Fitchburg, and I I was very um, proud to uh, vote for somebody mm -hmm. someone coming uh, coming from uh, the uh, <coughs> especially from the uh, Fitchburg school system that we came out for. We've had, mayor, we've had chiefs in the past that were homegrown police chiefs, and we have chiefs in the past that weren't. Uh, not to say that one is better than the other. In this instance, uh, we had a police chief from outside the district that, that, that did a good job, and uh, after he, re he uh, retired, uh, I personally wanted to see someone in-house be promoted mm -hmm. within. Uh, you know, my preference is an ingrown candidate more than an outside, only because I believe the ingrown can the, the homegrown candidate already knows the basics about the force itself and what the needs are of the community. There's no real learning curve. Uh, Chief Martineau was a sergeant detective for over 25 years at the police department. He grew up in the Elm Street neighborhood area, so he understands the force, he understands the, the weaknesses, the strengths, he understands the hot spots. So my vote in favor of his appointment was, was the confidence in him. It was the confidence in him knowing that you know he can hit the ground on the first day of, of the job and it's not really going to be much of a learning curve and plus he had the support of his own staff uh, and that's, that, that's also that's, that's also crucial you want you want your staff to, to, to like who leads the, leads the department and uh, this was a very good choice and, and I'm, I'm pleased with the result. What about numbers? We, we used to have somewhere in the vicinity in the late 2000, 2008, 2009 if my statistics are right we had about 90, 93 police uh, personnel. Early 2000s. Early yeah. 2000. Yeah. Now we have somewhere in the 72. 60s. 72. 72. Yeah. Okay. Do we need more? Is he going to support, uh, look for more? Will you support his interest in looking for more if that's what he wants? Well, we, as I said earlier, we've already started the process of hiring three more. Uh, it's not the cure-all to end all, but it's a movement in the right direction. Mm -hmm. What's difficult for us as a city is right now we have ballooning pension and health care costs sure. that are comprised of over 25% of our operating budget. So anytime we add personnel, we have to take that into account. However, given that fact, we have to prioritize what personnel we add. And public safety should be number one on any list in the city in terms of added personnel, especially in a police department that's lost over 20 people in the last 10 years. Now, that was a result of the federal government under the Clinton administration uh, giving cities and towns federal funds to they, hire officers and then, and then like any other federal handout that money did. doesn't stay there forever and once it goes away the cities and towns are forced to make cuts because they're not getting that added benefit mm -hmm. so we've had that pain felt here since that time and we're slowly trying to build it back and let me ask you about another position that we talked about 18 months ago it was initially filled and then it it wasn't and that's the position of the economic developer for Fitchburg. We, I think we can all concur that this is a very critical position to Fitchburg. Somebody who's responsible for attracting business into Fitchburg. 
the money was put out there. We don't have the position filled now. Is that something we need to hire or we need to look for? What's, talk to us about that position. Oh, absolutely. We need to uh, move forward and hire somebody to fill that position. Um, I, I concur with the city council and work closely with the city council to make sure that uh, we start from the beginning and go through the, uh, the protocols and process, the process that we need in order to find the right person to fill the position. Um, we actually, actually increased the, uh, the salary for the position okay. the, to, to allow the mayor and the search committee um, the, the ability to find the person with the qualifications that we need in order to help us um, implement the, uh, the initiatives that we, we, we need to, to put in place in order to grow the, um, uh, the industrial and commercial uh, tax base. One of the things you talked about was that not only did we not have an economic developer, but we also, and we don't, but we also don't have an economic development plan of any type. So even if we were to hire this person tomorrow, unless they had vision and foresight of their own. Councilor Tran was instrumental in getting this whole issue before us. He put in the petition to reinstitute the job. When, the, when Mayor Wong was first elected, one of her first acts was to make, uh, dissolve the economic development department. Um, and she stated at the time that we didn't have the money to fund it and that given her economic development credentials, she could do the job just as good, if not better. Eight years later, we've seen declining home values, increased property taxes, and almost running into a collision with our tax ceiling. The mayor has clearly failed at attracting economic development. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the reasons why Councilor Tran and other councilors spearheaded a movement to reinstitute this department. It's not a cure-all to end all, but other cities and towns like our sister city of Lemonster they have an economic development staff dedicated to rezoning the, the city, going out and, and, and marketing the city, and letting the council and the mayor know the strengths and the weaknesses in terms of private development. We don't have anybody doing that. So when we had the mayor reinstitute the position, the mayor brought back an appointment that the council, a majority of the council felt was, was did not have the pr appropriate credentials to do the job, and we've, we've, we compelled the mayor to go back and relook at the position. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we'll get someone this go around who we believe is, is, is better qualified for the job. But it, it's, it's a crucial position that we haven't had in eight years, and there's no excuse for it. One of the things when we look at bringing anybody into town, any new business, industry, even small uh, enterprises, is our high utility rates between Unitel, which is what the second highest on electric and gas in the nation is some, some of the uh, statistics that I hear, but also we've got the sewer separation project, which we're still suffering under the heavy burden of high cost for sep uh, the sewer separation. Are we anywhere with getting any reasonable fix for some of these problems, the Unitel and the sewer separation? I guess the sewer separation we have to live with. Do we also have to live with Unitil? Are there any possibilities of, I keep hearing other towns saying munis, the, you need to go to these new muni choice groups. Is there any options open on that, do you know? I support muni choice. I believe that the le state legislature, uh, components of the state legislature continue to block uh, efforts for muni choice. You know, they're heavily influenced by the utility companies. And I know personally my, my own, uh, father and the local delegation has really pushed hard for muni choice but it's hard getting 168 reps to go along with you or a majority of those 168 reps and so far it's been unsuccessful but they keep trying but muni choice i believe is the way to go and there are statistics that back up the fact that any municipality that has a a, a uh, uh, muni muni company running the utilities the rates are substantially lower mm -hmm. unitil is a monopoly on us we can't get rid of them unless we have it through legislation and they are absolutely a drain on our business community and our residents. And that's one of the other reasons why we're suffering in the commercial mm -hmm. industrial sector. When your tax rates are 40% higher and your utility rates are 25 to 30% higher, the cost of doing business in this city is not worth it to a private investor when there are cities and towns surrounding us that you can go to for a lot less. And I'm not trying to be negative and, and encourage people to do that, but it's just, it's just the economic reality you're we're telling in. us the truth. So, yeah. The truth hurts, and, yeah, and we're hearing it the does. truth. Well, I, I agree with Councilor Dinatale, and I'm um, going to piggyback on his comments on the uh, on the Muni bill, which I also agree with. Um, 
the fact of the matter is that we're not going to get rid of Unitel anytime soon. Mm -hmm. So we have to live with Unitel, and we have to find a way to attract the, the right businesses and companies to the city. Um, if you find and attract the right business with the right clientele, it doesn't matter if the, the utilities are high or not. The business will survive. It's all about having the right customers going through the door of that business. And if you don't have the customers, the, the, the business will not be successful. How can we attract customers? We have a light problem. We're hoping we'll get the, all the street lights on and make our city warm, bright, welcoming again, uh, hopefully, quickly. Um, crime, we're trying to get a handle on. We've got a new police chief. We're going to start some uh, additional police officers to do some patrols and community policing. Um, we'll get an economic developer. How do we bring people to the city? What's the, what's the magic wand? I, I, do you have any thoughts on, is it all of these things we've just listed? I'll be blunt and say that it starts at the top, and I believe that, I believe strongly that there might need to be a change, and not might, there needs to be a change in the executive leadership of this city. The, the standard bearer of our city is the mayor of the city, and based on the statistics that were cited, the job hasn't been getting done. And you can put the right people in the right places, but if you don't have an effective manager and leader at the top to steward them and to set the policy and the groundwork and be engaging, uh, the status quo is going to continue. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is focus on public safety, getting the lights back on, and cleaning our streets up. Mm -hmm. There are many areas of the city that, are, that have trash littered everywhere, brush, it doesn't require a lot of money to prioritize and at reallocate resources that you have to those hot spots. Uh, that would improve the image of the city. In addition to improving the gateway into the city, like Water Street, we've got to focus our CDBG funds from the federal government on beautification projects for that entryway into the city, because right now it is not really appealing. So it's a loaded question. It's not easy to just say you've got to do this, this, that, and the other thing. But I believe it starts from the top and we need an effective leader to steward this city towards a recovery. I, 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 I agree with that, Mary, and uh, the answer to that question is very simple. You know, with me having a, uh, a management background and many years in, in managing uh, projects and, and personnel in three continents, I can tell you it, it began with the uh, management, uh, having the right people in mm -hmm. places, uh, and, um, and it trickles down. Um, it's unfortunate that in the past several years, the council has taken the lead in, in doing some of these things. And uh, one example is the um, economic development mm -hmm. position. Um, the council has decided that we need a qualified person. And uh, we push and we push and we've, uh, now we've, we're, we're, we've come to a point where we have, I, I heard, two great candidates oh. for the position. So um, it starts from the top and everything happens from the top down. What about the housing? This is kind of a good news, bad news, bad news. The good news, I suppose you could say, is that housing is affordable in Fitchburg. The bad news, bad news, is that as residents who look towards home ownership or property ownership as being one of your uh, largest investments, it's become a poor investment for many people because there is losing or no value in their property. The, the other thing is that we have no, you're not getting good tax dollars from it because the value of our property is decreasing so much that the city isn't getting the tax dollar from it. So how do we bring the tax value of our houses up so we again have investments in our own property? Is it the commuter line? The commuter line's supposed to bring people to this area, make us a good, attractive bedroom community. Mm -hmm. How do we make our property? Well, it starts with balance. I mean, right now our tax base is 80% residential. I mean, when 80% of the tax pie is borne by residents, you're absolutely going to see an increase in your bill every year because we rely more and more on the residential side of the equation to collect the taxes that we are allowed to collect by law. The issue always becomes, people ask me, why do my taxes go up? Three reasons. First, it starts with the mayor, whoever it is, unilaterally raising the tax ceiling by 2.5%, which then allows the city to collect more taxes than they did last year. 
If you do that while home values collectively decline because of the market, people have to make up that gap. You're still going to collect this level of taxes, but if all the values go down, that's why everybody's rates are going way up to make up for that huge gap. So the only way people's rates are going to go down is if the home values increase mm -hmm. while the tax levy ceiling stabilizes. And one of the ways to do that is balance. We need to work on that 20% of the equation, which is what we're trying to do through this economic development group, through moving towards a single tax rate, and through trying to make more investment in public safety. Mm -hmm. It's a long process that we have to stay on the course of doing, and it's going to take a long time. But we need balance. Fitchburg has too many uh, social service agencies, too many low-income housing projects, and there's nothing against those kinds of properties. But when the city has a big reliance on them mm -hmm. and not on the commercial industrial side of the equation, taxpayers, both multifamily and residential, are never going to see any relief. Right. So we have to move away from residential and focus on commercial, commercial. and industrial, especially properties that generate revenue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it goes to my, the first comment I made when we uh, opened up the show, Mary, is that we need to increase the commercial and industrial tax base. Once we do that, everything will fall into, into place, place, right? If we don't, who is going to buy a property in the city of Fitchburg knowing that the property value has decreased 33%? Who would? Because by that statistics, if you buy that property in a few years, it will continue, the trend would continue to go down and mm -hmm. you'll be losing money. Mm -hmm. um, pivoting a little bit, City Hall. We are working out of a we have a defunct city hall that's probably dangerous. With surprising, the roof hasn't fallen in with all the snow we've had this year. We're working out of a building on Boulder Drive. Um, what's your suggestion about city hall? Throw money at it, build it up, rebuild it, uh, or relocate city hall. You know, I've oftentimes thought we have this constant uh, sort of quagmire about Route 2 access. We don't have Route 2 access. Is this the time to move? a new city hall to a new municipal location or a new municipal center closer to Route 2 around Route 31 where the, uh, the, the new water park is or, or to even the South Street where you know, you've got a lot of traffic coming on that area. What is your thought about City Hall? What should we do? It's a money, money loser maybe at this point. Well, to my knowledge, um, we don't know what direction the city is going to take in relation to the current City Hall. We have a city hall uh, commission that has been uh, meeting and discussing on what the future will be with the old city hall and what the, what the city should do with it. Um, if you ask me, it's time for us to make a capital investment um, and uh, find a place and build a new city hall. Would you site it in Main Street? a new city hall, would you locate it somewhere on Main Street in Fitchburg? Well, we have to do a study to find the right location to have that building. Uh, and, and the right, right location meaning proper um, um, uh, exit and, and, and entrance points for people, mm -hmm. proper parking spaces for people, and so forth. So that, that a decision like that can't be hastily made. Mm -hmm. I differ with Council Trent on one aspect of this. I believe that there's been a clamor in the uh, commission and, and members of the public, especially those who value the historical nature of the building, that we should renovate the building and keep its historical richness. Personally, if we renovate that building, it's going to cost way more to the taxpayers than if we tore it down and built it anew. But I don't like either option. I think that we should seriously look at the property across the street from where City Hall was. Rollstone Bank and Trust has moved their operations to Lemonster. That is a fairly new building, that is a very big building, and it's ADA compliant, and it's got parking. I don't know why the city has not entertained moving our operations there and having a dialogue with the executive management mm -hmm. team at Rollstone Bank and Trust. Mm -hmm. It would cost the city substantially lower to move there and we'd still be bordering on Main Street. As to City Hall's future, it's been condemned. It's got to be torn down and hopefully can, we can resort, re preserve the historical pieces of it. But I am not in favor of building a brand new facility. Our bond rating, we're going to be able to take out a large bond in 2019 once the high school is paid and the new fire station is paid off. Mm -hmm. We have so many capital project needs right now, I don't believe a new city hall is high on the list. What I think we should do instead is use that money that we're going to be taking on in a bond in the four, next four or five years and get rid of all the dilapidated 
properties that we own in the city that we don't have the money to demolish at this time. Mm -hmm. Take out a bond to demolish all those properties, rezone those lots to commercial use only, and that way you get rid of the blight, the eyesore, and you give developers a chance to invest their money immediately into construction and not having to go through all the, 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 hoops, and ladder, the hoops and ladders of, of knocking it down and making it environmentally friendly. Mm -hmm. So I'm not in favor of building a new city hall. If the Rollstone Bank and Trust Building is not an option, then yes, we're going to need a new facility because where we are right now, unacceptable. It's not a conducive working space and it's, it's not very customer friendly. Mm -hmm. So my first choice is to look for another facility like that Rollstone building as a first option. And then a the last option would probably be we're just going to have to build a new one. But sure. if we build a new one, it'll be another five or six years before we're ready to do that because we don't have the money to take out right now to do such, such a project. One of the things we always seem to do is hire or look at commissioners, uh, commissions. We, we, hi we bring in a group to study a project, to study groups, commission groups, whatever. I think of Fitchburg State University. That is a gem in our city. Do we use them enough to help us guide where we're going? The university. They're our highest tax, I mean, they're our largest employer. Well, I think, I think we, we are using the university and helping okay. with uh, many studies. Um, but keep in mind, we can do all the studies that we want, but if we don't um, uh, act upon them, nothing is going to happen. Mm -hmm. We have so many studies that ha has been done in the last 10 years, and what happened to those studies? We shelved them. Mm -hmm. Nothing has been done. We, we did studies on, on, on Main Street parking. Now we have so many problems with Main, Main Street parking. Um, and now we, we, we found out that there, there has been many studies that have been done, but no one has gone through them and um, see to it that we implement some of those uh, uh, action items. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the college has been instrumental in revitalization efforts in the city. They have taken up space. Good partners. Um, good, very good partners. They, they have renovated uh, buildings that we used to own that we could not operate any longer and they saved them. They tore down that uh, eyesore of a property on Main Street right next to the uh, Dunkin' Donuts station that is now going to have a future CVS there. So that's a good thing, a commercial uh, property going in there. Uh, what's, always, what's always puzzled me is how we have a college of this size and we have not many commercial areas for the students mm -hmm. to, to frequent. And I believe one of the reasons for that is because of that perception problem we talked about earlier as a result of uh, not very good efforts to try and improve the downtown area and, and, and the like. So I think as we said earlier it all starts with getting that investment tax base up and putting more money into public safety and concentrating on those areas to bring that perception back to a level of this is a place that I can feel safe to go down to and frequent on a daily basis and it starts from the top. I have to thank you both. Our time is up. I have to thank you both for coming and, and sharing your insight and, and valuable knowledge with us. Um, you're always a, a treat to have on. Before we go, I want to ask you your, again your political futures. Marcus, you did take out papers for city councilor at large. Yes. So you're going to run again. Yes, I am, and that's where I'm going to stay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Dean, you have not taken out papers papers yet at least it wasn't announced in the in the paper well first of all thank you Mary for having both of us here tonight with you um, Beyond welcome I, I, I am going to run again but my decision my decision has not been made yet um, I will take out nomination papers but um, the nomination papers for what position is to be de determined very interesting very interesting response <laughs> I thank you both very much for being with us again tonight and we thank you for watching your right to know and sitting in with the FRCC as we leave you we want you to know and remember that your local or city or town Republican committee is your only grassroots organization that supports and holds dear your liberty and your constitutional rights and conservative values we encourage you to join us at any one of our monthly meetings. Why? Because to us, GOP stands for growth, opportunity, and prosperity, and because we always stand for freedom. Thank you. America, we stand for freedom. So let us all unite. Strive for our republic that reflects our values, that preserves our rights, 
Handgold's phone in power and mind that reflects our values and preserves our rights. Handgold's phone in power and 